Today on The Breakfast, Department of State Services DSS confirmed some key political players plotting to foist an interim government in Nigeria would have further conversations on the show. Also on The Breakfast, the Nigerian Labour Congress NLC suspends its planned nationwide indefinite strike gives the Apex Bank two weeks to normalize money supply nationwide, especially in the rural areas. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful, you know, Thursday morning. I am Messi Boko. Now, the lineup is quite interesting. I hope you had a great night rest and probably you're on your way to work and you're ready to be part of the show this morning, whether you're home, wherever it is that you are streaming or at the office, then it's fine to sit back, relax. Don't even think about changing the frequency. Uh, always, we start off with what's making the rounds. What are Nigerians talking about? Now, the first is that the Lagos State government has announced a, a plan to reimburse for the victims of the bus train accident, which occurred on Thursday, to be precise, uh, March the 9th. Quite saddening, unfortunate situation at the PW in Ikeja. That's the area of some part in Lagos State. Now, if you are not in Lagos, uh, that unfortunate incident happened. However, the state government had promised uh, to employ one employable child of each of the dead victims of the accident and a concessionary scholarship to one of their biological children. The compensation was concluded after, uh, you know, that kind of meeting that happened where you had nine member committees set up by the state in an aftermath of the accident, uh, which, you know, a report was submitted. Now, according to the findings of that report, it showed that the accident had six fatalities from a total of 102 passengers, which involved 85 passengers on board and a staff bus. Now, don't forget, that's Lagos, you know, uh, Lagos State uh, Transport. It was a bus that was conveying uh, members of those who work with the government in Lagos State. So I'm trying to look for the word, you know, to classify that. It looked like a BRT, but actually that vehicle was, uh, you know, it's, it's that of the Lagos State government for, you know, her staff. Now the committee, as part of its recommendation, had advised that, you know, the debts benefit from the group live insurance for family of the disease, uh, you know, advised in that provision of employment to one employable child of the diseased and concessionary scholarship to one of the diseased biological children. Now, injured victims were also uh, recommended in the report to be paid full insurance claim as compensation, while any staff victim with you know, permanent disabilities also to be compensated in line with the group life insurance policy of the state, among all the benefits. Well, we would say that that's very commendable of the Lagos State government, but hey, how do we even get to a point where we avert all of this? You know, you need to get to a point where this doesn't really happen, and that's where the conversation about being proactive happens. Now, over time, if you look at the report, if you look at the antecedent, Lagos State government has been very big on compensation. They say, we will compensate, we'll compensate X, Y, Z, and what have you. So it's another thing to say, we will compensate, but... Are you really compensating? Will there be an action? Is, is it just a policy statement? Fingers are crossed, but you cannot, the compensation cannot make up for the life of a human being. And so I think that, you know, in our dealings as government, because government is concerned with the business of governance, and so it's important that beyond making plans for compensation for every other time you have something uh, going wrong. I think that we can, as a government, we should be working to ensure that these things don't happen because there's no compensation whatsoever that can make up for uh, a lost life. I mean, those families, those persons who have lost their lost one, their loved ones, I don't think there would be any compensation that can make for it. That vacuum would ever be there and it can never be filled. But we're not saying that uh, you know, the Lagos State government, via her statement, has not said something very credible, but we're saying that 
we hope is not just a policy statement. We hope that there's an implementation to that. But however, it's important moving forward that we find ways to avert that. Because if you look at that accident and you know what's going on, especially with the roads, we probably would have thought that there should be a barrier uh, where you can't even have any vehicle crossing you know, from one point, some sort of obstruction, if you like to say. Very unfortunate, and our hearts are prayers uh, with those who have lost their loved ones in the course of all of this. Now, uh, what's also making the rounds on uh you know our list this morning what are nigerians talking about what's been making the rounds over time it's uh the fact that the lagos state police command prior to this time there was an incident that happened but let's bring you up to speed with all of the development which is that the lagos uh i beg your pardon the ogun state police command has issued a 72 ultimatum 72 hour to be very precise ultimatum and at the time this was put out for a sensational singer his popularly known as portable you know to report himself to the nearest police station or be arrested by friday don't forget today's thursday so uh, hopefully he shows up and answer uh, the questions or whatever it is that he's supposed to answer. And this was actually made known by the state's police public relations officer, Abi, Abimbola Oye Yemi, uh, who confirmed the development in a statement that was obtained at the end of the day by, you know, our correspondent. And of course, it was made public, you know, to, uh, it was also made available to journalists and then it was public. However, it was also reported that Portable had been informed to submit himself to the police or Rick Spin Weeks. He also had confirmed the portable's father had pleaded on his son's behalf and promised to bring him to the station. Now, I feel like uh, if you're on social media, it's such a great time to be on social media. I mean, it's that this dispensation where you say it's a social media dispensation. You go on various social media, you'd see all of the uh, the acting, uh, mimicking what have you as to what had transpired. So that video actually had surfaced. If you don't already know how this, how we got to this point, this video at some point, it was a live video where Portable, I mean, he's been on the news every other time. The best name to know him for is Portable. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go online and, and, and go to Google and just say Portable. Yeah, I'm sure you would see all of the stories. So he's, he's, he's an artist that's been on the news for a very long time. And and I mean, just on that particular day, there was a video that made it to the round where it looked like the men of the Nigerian police had visited his office uh, trying to make an arrest or something. And then his reaction was overboard. I mean, it was comical. Uh, <laughs> some of the lines associated to him is that he says, I'm a zoo. <laughs> I'm a babu. I live in a zoo. Okay, maybe we could probably take that sound if we, if we have it. Let's, let's take a listen. So if you if you missed that, uh, he was saying that he's a babu. He lives in a zoo, as a zazu. <laughs> you know, for an artist that's very creative, because you look at the lyrics. I mean, that's what I'm thinking about. And I'm a babu. I live in a zoo. As a zazu. Well, come on, fantastic rhymes there. But you also need to listen to some of the things that he said. Uh, he's talked about working for the APC government that control the country or what have you. Uh, we can't say because it's at a time where we're dealing with a lot of police brutality where you have the police acting contrary. If you look at the, the motto of the police is that police is your friend. And so there's been a lot of back and forth. However, it's been stated that he should, you know, respond. Now, let's even look at the crux of it. If the police says or have reported that you have been invited, there's nothing wrong. The police can summon anyone. You could be invited on any occasion. But what happens when you do not, um, you know, honor this invitation? How is the police supposed to act? What was the occasion? I think that, you know, if the police had uh, sent out an invitation to Portable, and if you can hear me this morning, it's okay to just honor the invitation uh, rather than put up all of this. But the creative part of the Nigerian community is taking to social media. And trust me, it's very comical, especially when you get to Twitter. Uh, you get to TikTok and what have you. You get to see the recreation. It has become a challenge. But we can also take out the fact that 
on the one hand, police brutality, uh, harassment, or, or necessary issues. There were some claims that he made. He talked about the fact that uh, he's been arrested. He doesn't know why he's arrested. But that's not the story that the Nigerian police also put out. Uh, Dejobi has also said that his behavior, and on the other hand, this is also another development where uh, Dejobi is saying possible will be arrested. He will be made to face the law because if you look at the video prior to this, this is just one part of it where he was involved uh, with a lot of insults, uh, putting out statements and what have you. And now DJB has said that he will be arrested. He will be made to face the, you know, the wrath of the law for assaulting and harassing police officer, which is actually a crime that's according to the statement. But you also need to understand as a citizen, that's okay for the police to invite you and you honor the invitation. There's no reason to escape that. I mean, you say, uh, if you're not guilty, there's no reason to be scared. Yes. So um, but also, on the other hand, we can't also ignore the fact that in the course of discharging duties as police officers, security agencies, they've gone overboard. And we have seen that that has led to a lot of protests, especially the biggest that has happened. I'm not sure we're going to forget about that in any time or any time soon. We're talking about the NSAS protests. But that's it. Now, on uh, the next stop trending, this happens in Lagos. I, I really don't know what happens in other parts of, you know, the country. But I can say for a couple of states which I have been uh, privileged to leave in or, you know, just stay for a couple of times, Abuja is nothing to compare to what you're experiencing in Lagos in terms of transportation and movement. You don't get to see all of that kind of behavior where you have... Uh, some persons who have been tagged as Agbero, even though if you look at the word Agbero, it's quite different from what it is. So I think that now if someone says you're an Agbero, the person is just saying that you're a thought. Yes, but you see Agberos, if you look at the original uh, meaning or if you look at how the word came about, it's not necessarily that they're thought, but... Um, uh, those who are involved in activities in the park, you know, loading, taking loads and loading and what have you. But it's been associated. Now, if you say the word Agbero, if someone says you're an Agbero, just forget it. The person is just saying that you're a, th a tout, right? So residents were stranded yesterday because of a protest that took place by those who were in the transport sector in various parts of Lagos as downfall drivers. I mean, downfall drivers, if you don't know already, if you look at those yellow buses and what have you, uh, they took to the street yesterday protesting against the exorbitant fees being collected by officials of the Lagos State Park and Gardens, which is led by, you know, MC Oluoma. That's, uh, you know, he's popularly called MC Oluoma. Uh, so this was what happened yesterday. It was a report saying that you had a lot of passengers in Lagos yesterday who were very stranded. Okay, they were stranded. Uh, the fees collected by the officials of the Lagos State Park and Gardens Management Committee, just like I had mentioned, is headed by MC Oluoma. And um, the protest had started at a toll gate, the end of Lagos, and you know, it got to the end of Lagos. Abiokuta Express is a serious issue. If you don't live in Lagos, I'm not sure you're going to understand what I'm saying, but yeah, imagine that you do a thing. So, so starting from the toll gate to the end of Abiokuta, the express was it was it was spreading very fast, you know, to other parts of you know the state. Now, and like I rightly mentioned, a lot of persons were working a distance, you know, to get to their destination because that's you know part of humans movement. You can't take it out. Uh, you also find that the bus drivers refused to operate, citing extortion and alleged brutality by the state. Uh, backed by its officials, drivers and the assistants were also seen carrying various placards. They were protesting against the alleged extortion. Some of the inscription, I'm not sure if, if, if we can project uh, those pictures or we have, you know, a clip to that. The inscriptions on this placards were saying, we are tired of Agbero's extortion. We can't continue working for Agbero's. Uh, these were some of the inscriptions. We pay over 25,000 naira daily to Agbero's extortion. Extortion is killing us, among others. This is some of the, uh, you know, the inscriptions that you will find on the cards. Now, if you don't live in Lagos, you probably might not understand what that is. But I think it's time, you know, that the Lagos state government, I think it's time that those who are calling the shots in this state pay attention to, you know, this consent. The consent of these drivers, the downfall drivers, 
Korokbe, whatever it is you want to call them. Those in the transport business is a major concern. I think that we need to look at that. Now, usually, it's just unfortunate that we forget if, because it feels like uh, when we get to a period of politicking and canvassing for votes, and that's what we get, we tell the people who do X, Y, Z. The reason why government exists is that the government would make life easier for the people. The issue of governance is top priority. Now, the constitution says that the welfare of the people and what have you will be top priority. This is me paraphrasing. Welfare includes welfare. I mean, you can't, you, we don't need to begin to stipulate and, you know, to be very uh, specific and say, okay, welfare includes this, welfare includes all of that. Now, government should have a human face, should be humane. Now, if a, a group of people are complaining about a certain act, this is not the first time. And these persons are also saying that they're not going to go out of the street. So hopefully today there might just be also another protest, a continuation of what has happened, protesting, you know, these uh, extortion i mean sometimes you're on the road you see all sort of things happen if you patronize this public transport you could just be stopped your boss could be stopped yeah and then there would just be a lot of back and forth arguments because at every point someone is there to take monies from you and you're going to pay some of these persons don't really own these vehicles this vehicle is actually on a higher purchase so that means that you're probably you know renting this vehicle you're expected to remit a certain amount and what happens if you're not living up to expectation so yes we need to remind ourselves the reason why government exists. Government exists, you know, to make sure that life is easy for the people, provide basic amenities. It's an issue about service and what have you. And so uh, this is a call. We hope that the Lagos State Government, who should be responsible, we believe that you've been responsible. The governor himself, to be very precise, Babajide Songwolu, we're asking that you look into the plight of uh, this persons, group of persons who are crying the extortion, you know, because at the end of the day, who suffers all of this? It's just the Lagosians, those who leave here, or not necessarily leave here. So if you're here and you have any business, the cost of transportation goes high. Let's not forget that we're dealing with inflation, double digit inflation. I mean, people are dealing with a lot. So uh, I think that a sensible government would be thinking about making life easier for the people. So it's a complaint, it's a concern. You need to pay attention to this. We're calling on the Lagos State Government to please you know, look at the consent of these people and see how you can get this men out of the road or, you know, just reduce it to the barest minimum. Unfortunately, like I said, if someone says you're an Agmero, unfortunately, what it means there is that they're saying you're a tout because that's, you know, the correlation, that's the connection. But that's not what it should have been, but that's what it is now. We'll just take a break and when we return, we time for us to go through the papers. We we'll call it Off the Press and Ezekiel Nyaitok will be joining us, all things Bini We ask that you stay with us. Good morning. <laughs>